Now we're back. Song Yoon with the MVP in game number one of Africa Freaks versus Long Junior on LCK. Summer? I don't understand. Song Yoon had a great game, but he, did. he really didn't have to do much no. in that game. He attacked moved a lot he, in the right places. He auto-attacked, but Snowflower and Ixu did so much work in these team fights to set it up. And just watching him here on the periphery, but oh man, just free autos all day, every day. Yeah. It's an 80 carry dream right now. It really was. I mean, <laughs> that was. I mean, he did really nothing in this fight besides auto attack. Uh, uh, Mickey gets him in there. They just buy a lot of time with the Zonia's Hourglass, and of course they kill him. But look at what Ix is going to do. There's the parallel convergence coming on through. But here we go, the second setup. Look how patient Snowflower is in the back. And he's going to set this up when Parallel Convergence comes off cooldown again. There you go. Hits three members, and look at this. Oh, my lord. And three auto wow. attacks forever. Song Yoon, he's a good AD carry. But did he deserve MVP this game when plays like that existed? No. <laughs> Probably not. I mean, he did a good job of not dying. So that's something. It's good to not die. That was that carry. was impressive teamwork and communication between Snowflower and Ixu because yeah. he waited until the the parallel convergence was coming off cooldown to throw the Bartle. Right. And I think that's what was the most important thing about that fight was he wasn't just throwing it willy nilly. They were very patient, knowing that synergy, and then they executed it extremely well in a choke point. It was great and a great start for the Afrika Freaks. A little bit touch and go in the early game. But I'm curious to see what we're going to see in game number two as far as picks and bans go. Are we going to see similar styles attempted by each of these teams, or are we going to see something a bit different? A bit of variety. bit of variety indeed. And Longju, will they go for that big scaling team fighting composition? Will Africa now that they are on the red side? And they have that counter pick. They can go for a more skirmish based composition once again. It'll be a LeBlanc ban. We did not see that in game number one. All right. Yeah, kind of interesting to see that coming out suddenly for Longju. Don't want Mickey last picking that, I suppose. And it's pretty safe blind pick, really. I suppose. Africa thinking long and hard about their first ban. They're going to go with Kindred. Again, so they did ban Kindred, Lucian, and Trundle in the last game, as you can see on your screen right now. And we did have a couple of those jungle bands coming through. And no Graves pickup, interestingly yeah. enough. And the Rek'Sai making a surprisingly high priority return in that game. But it, it does, it did work nicely. And again, as of the latest patch, the Titanic Hydra Cinder Hulk combination has been very popular among top Rek'Sai players in Korean solo queue. Wow, and the Bard band actually drawn by Snowflower. It was a great game last game. He played it extremely well. Same band again for Africa as they take out the Nidalee. And we are going to see Rise be the final band here. So Sivir is going to be left up unless Longju, or Africa rather, wants to get rid of it. And they did take away Fury's Lucian. That is one of his all-time signature champions. We think about Fury and the Fury of 2015, and certainly Lucian was terrifying. And with the Black Cleaver Yomu's Ghostblade build that the Lucian tends to go for in the early game right now, he can be a bit of a problem. Yeah. And it's going to be the Rek'Sai band. Wow, Africa. Huh. Three junglers. So are they just going to take the Elise and force Chaser onto something else? Interesting question. Yeah, maybe trying to get a, uh, another Maokai as well. Will be the Lucian. First pick tier. True. And it looks like they are going to take the Elise. Now the question is, Echo, Maokai, uh, all available. Trundle, another very high priority pick that That's is true. Was going to be available. Uh, Lyra. Hovering over that Lee Sin, he has been a Lee Sin player for a very long time. Could still he's, take the Graves too, though. Yeah, he's one of the better Lee Sin players historically in this league. Lear has always been an excellent mechanical player, so I think you take the Graves here. The Graves seems logical. I mean, you've, you've banned so many junglers, you might as well take that Graves. Really thinking about an early Lee Sin pick. I wouldn't imagine we're going to see the Karma. Oh, we could. We could definitely see it mid or support. I mean, picked right now. It's you think they pick a, it right now? It's a flex pick. Why not? Yeah, maybe they get will. It, get okay. in their heads early on. So no karma pick or band in the last game. Does rise to the first round of the draft. This does mean that 
They they had an opportunity here to take Echo and Maokai at the same time, but that would tip their hand a little bit because it would no longer be a mystery as to what the solo lanes were. It looks like Longju might decide to grab that Echo before Africa has a chance. Uh, Coco is... Coco uh, and... Um, Faker. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Not Faker. Oh. Faker's played a couple of games he, of mid lane Echo. Uh, Coco and Kuro are the longtime mid lane, like the original mid lane Echo players here in Korea. Faker actually didn't play any mid lane Echo until this year. That's right. But when he did, it was, it was pretty good. insane. It was good. So we don't know where the Echo is going. The Elise will be the repeat pick here for Chaser. So they're getting us some pretty strong picks. And with three jungle bans, it's interesting to me that. Africa isn't taking any kind of jungle priority pick here. Instead, they may go after that Caitlyn again. Song Yoon, I think, is hovering over the J the Jin because that's what Fury was doing in the last game. Some bumping new champions like you. I guess guy. so. Yeah. Club it now. <laughs> it's the pick and bad nightclub. Yeah. I'd go to that nightclub, Doa. I'm sure you would. <laughs> I'd, I'd probably go. I'd hang out. I wouldn't really know what was going on, but I'd, I'd have a good time. <laughs> Thinking about that Graves, again for Lyra. I think you go with the, well. If you want to make plays, you go with the Lee Sin. If you want to make the sick plays, yes, you do, Lyra. Wow, OK. Well, we'll see what he does with this. Certainly an unorthodox pick in the Lee Sin, especially because it's a Lucian. Because that does mean it's he's harder to kick out due to his dashes and reposition him to get killed easily. It will be Sivir. Banned last game, but now picked up by the Africa Freaks. They built themselves pretty solid movement speed composition. Remember, the, the movement speed bonuses from both Karma and Sivir are going to be in effect here, which makes this a, quite a powerful pick composition already. It's true. Looks like maybe Azir and Trundle over on the other side. Thinking about switching it over to the Nami, though. Azir, Nami, okay. I'm going for some more disengage. And this is an excellent composition for kiting from Longju Gaming. They've got a lot of protection. They have Parallel Convergence, Tidal Wave, Azir Ult, all possible disengage tools in this game. And this is going to wow, be... if they go Thresh. It's a pure pick comp <laughs> at that point. Yeah, no kidding. And they are going to be so fast. Yeah. The Mantra Shield from Karma plus the Sivir Ultimate means that their speed of collapse will be absolutely crazy. Well, they could give Mickey that Zed and send the Karma down to bot lane, too. Well, they're definitely going to consider that option. They see that there's not going to be a great split push answer to a Zed in this game. So you will have the Echo capable of self-healing with that I, ultimate. I kind of lean towards the Zed. I want to see Mickey play Zed in this. I want to see the Thresh with Karma and Sivir. <laughs> well, I mean, that'd be fun too. But it looks like we might see the Victor, a champion that got pretty strong during the Mage update. He's always been strong. It will be All Victor. Right. Historically a champion that Mickey has played, but we haven't seen it ever since some of those Victor changes came through a while back. Yeah. But now that he did receive one of the minor updates here, he does have some more interesting power with his Q in the early parts of the laning phase. So, and uh, especially if you stack a lot of mana, his mana shield gets pretty substantial. Yeah. Chaos Storm, it seems like, can be a, a bit more bursty, maybe, too, with him now. Uh, it's a little less initial damage, and they changed the tick times on, on it, so you have to keep it on people for the entire duration of the spell to really deal a lot of damage. But you can deal substantially more damage over time now if you can keep somebody in it for the entire six seconds, which is obviously hard. True. Unless Maokai locks him up. Other than that, they don't have a lot of ways to hold people in place, really, for that Victor Ultimate when you look at it. Well, they have the gravity field, so you can always chain uh, those things together. And they do have a lot yeah, of move Mickey. speed. Mickey also going to be taking that Ghost that was buffed pretty substantially in the late game on this patch. So this is all the makings of a pick composition here for the Afrika Freaks. A lot of single target CC and just ridiculous amounts of move speed. The new Ghost, which gives you a, now a 45% move speed increase at level 18, which is crazy. Yeah. And that's so good. Uh, especially if you start getting some more of those uh, Cloud Drakes in there, Cloud Dragons. Go fast. I believe it is Drake. It 
It's Drake and then Elder Dragon at the end. Yeah, God, I don't even know anymore. I got it. Don't worry about it, man. So, Africa Freaks looking for a 2-0 in their very first series of the season. We'll see if they can do it. It'd be a good start. Long Zhu trying to tie it up. Let's get in the game and find out who takes it. Bang at all in game this week, so. No, but he deserves a break. That's right. Welcome to Summer's Rift yet again for game number two between the Africa Freaks and Longju Gaming. The magic square in the sky. So That's right. How is it a rift? Floating that is square. not a rift. A rift is a valley. There is no rift here. It is on top of a mountain it's or it is a floating island. I think they're talking about the river, which is a very shallow Stop. rift. Stop. That's not a rift. It's a very, it's, a, it's rift like. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just very shallow, you know? No one would allow you to call this geographic setup a rift in the world. Oh, yeah? No. And it's not even four summoners. What are summoners? We don't even know. The name literally has no meaning. That's true. What is a summoner? And now, in the lore, and it's not a rift. So it's like nobody's not rift. Exactly. Nobody's unrift. <laughs> Ter terrible name. Forest. Just awful. It's kind of a forest. Many on the Floating island, forest. mountaintop. Floating forest. That's kind of cool. We'll take it. Floating Forest is significantly more descriptive. All right. Well, you're welcome, Riot Games. That one's free. Welcome to Floating Forest. <laughs> Much better. Whatever you say, Nami. Just as that long as you don't start singing. I think karma. That was karma. You're right. <laughs> Whatever. No, that was Nami. No, I think she was oh, using I mean, her mantra cue we right there. We were looking at Nami. Yeah. But we were hearing karma. She's loud like that. <laughs> she is. We are going to get standard lanes here. As Fury will sidestep the first Q in lane. We don't have any attempts here at an early take. D4 in for long shoot just in case Africa decided to go for the Gromp. You gotta go for the Gromp, man. Is that what you tell your buddies at the bar? That's right. Let's go for the Gromp. Sorry, tonight, Bro. guys. We don't have to get up early tomorrow. Let's go for the Gromp. <laughs> It's one of the greatest euphemisms it's possible in League of Legends. <laughs> it really is. It really is. I went, met this girl at the bar last night, and I totally went for the Grom. <laughs> it's like, whoa, bro, you went for the Grom. Uh, I can't believe it. Oh, all right. Nice snare onto Snowflower. Yeah, night used early. Yeah. This is a pretty it's annoying. bully lane, and especially when you hit that level two faster. So Africa not really respecting. They do have to use a summoner, trading one for one, but. A lot of damage down there early under this Karma. Yeah. And uh, I don't think Snowflower is expecting to get hit by that Aqua Prism. Oh, I think we're going to see a bit of a gank as Lyra comes up. Expression very low here. Okay. He's pushed way up without any vision. They're waiting for W cooldown right now. I guess so. Here we go. All right, yep. Ixu coming back in with that Twisted Advance. They're going to keep chasing. First Blood goes to the Afrika Freaks easily. Yeah, Lyra just, what do you expect? Lyra just darting in there, and Expression pushed way too far forward. Good, good patience from Ixu, and Expression not respecting the W cooldown coming back up as a possible trigger for a gank attempt. Yeah, and I mean, you know, no vision at all for Expression, so you play that far up with that low health, you can't really be surprised when you get killed. At a little after three minutes into the game. Exactly. Nope. Yeah, if that one's on you, top laner. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Very true. So Lyra now with his first blood gold gonna come into his own jungle. And he might find Chaser. Chaser might find him, gets him with the cocoon. That's a lot of initial damage from that Elise. As Lyra walks back into lane. Yeah, and we actually oh. have a TP. They're gonna make a collapse play right now. Yeah, they're gonna try to come down onto Chaser. Coco is there. Chaser flashes right away. Mickey's been chunked out quite a bit. Chaser waiting, doesn't have that flash. In fact, I believe he failed it. Trying to get over the wall, but he still lived anyway. Actually, Chaser, that was a that was a good flash away from the pit because he saw the TP coming in, and if he had been closer to that wall or not flash immediately, there was a possibility that Ixu could have just twisted advanced right over the blue pit wall. 
possibly. So that was it was a good flash by Chaser and a good little attempt there to deal some damage. One of the problems with the Lee Sin Elise jungle matchup is that if she can cocoon you and then get into spider form, you basically can't do anything because you can't land your Q because it will be intercepted by Spiderling. So that takes a big chunk of the damage out of your kit as Lee Sin. So you kind of just lose that duel. Yeah. And throughout all this, Coco Moby boots damage. first. Whoa, Vera. Make some plays, man. Uh, he's definitely going to try to. Wow, that is a jungle purchase we haven't seen in a very long time. Yeah. So this is about skirmishing again in the early game, but they burn that TP and the ghost early, and these are summoners that they really actually need in order to make these plays. They also gave Expression a huge CS lead in the top side as a result. Oh, Skirmish on the bot lane. Pure taking a lot of damage here. Lyra comes in. Pure flashing away. Fury on the run as well. Still has his flash left. That's Q. Can use it. Probably wants to use it right about now. Oh, wow. Oh, that was close. And it was still a bit too get close it. for Fury. Snowflower picking up the Bloodthirsty Ignite kill. Yeah. Wow, so they were pushed up right there. You don't expect the Lee Sin to just go nuts. I mean, he's basically just not really farming right now. Yeah. He has a refillable potion in Moby Boots, and his job is to run around the map and kill people. Well, now Ixu in trouble gets caught with that cocoon expansion, setting up for a kill there as Ixu tries to trundle his way back to top lane, man. He doesn't make it. So they didn't set that up as best they could. They g gave him actually a target to Twisted Advance to outside of Parallel Convergence, which meant that he could escape even though he didn't have his flash. Hard to make that gank without flashes on your side, though, for both Chaser and Expression when he was so close to the turret. Didn't end up working, but his gold is even, but it's basically been kills for Africa because we look at the actual farm totals right now, and there are pretty large leads developing for Expression and Coco here. Yeah, I mean, if Africa wants to make this work, it seems like they really need to kind of keep the momentum going. They need to keep getting kills and maybe channel that into a dragon or two. Looks like it's going to be an Infernal Drake coming up first. Hey, dude, did you miss the Azir-Victor mid lane matchup? Uh, I did not. <laughs> but, Does it bring uh, you back to 2015? Back, a little bit. Expression playing. Risky. He doesn't expect this. Yeah. Should have expected it. Uh, I don't know. Didn't that was terrible. To to That's, uh, <laughs> we knew it was going to be an easy game. <laughs> yeah. He did not expect the lane swap to come through. So he was pushing up. Uh, didn't think that he would be ganked by a Karma who did land the tether right there. So able to get that root while his flash was still down. And a pretty easy kill. Yep. Especially when his items were Dark Seal and Corrupting Potion. So against BF Sword, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. A lot of kills being spread around on uh, Africa. <gasps> oh, we got, got it. it! Nice. Wow, the Q from Snowflower picks up the blue Snowflower buff. Snowflower has been absolutely huge this series so far. Yeah. Had a great game one on that Bard, having a great game two already on this Karma. We'll see if he gets robbed from his MVP again if they win this game. <laughs> Hard to say though who deserved the last game. I think Ixu had a I, a good thing too. Yeah, he been going to. He did have a good thing going. Yeah. Uh, Expression just bought a cowl and walked back into the duo lane. I feel bad about that, Doa. That that does not. I don't understand what Longju is doing in terms of their lane assignments right now. You would think that they would want this 2v2 matchup, but instead they're just giving up a lot of pressure and they're allowing. They've allowed Ixu to catch back up in terms of farm. Yeah. So they're going to try and trade turret for turret right now, and Chaser is here to help with that, but they're, they're going to be a little bit behind. This could give the opportunity that Africa needs to go ahead and make a play for the Rift Herald. Oh, they're heading over to it right now. We'll see if they actually end up taking it. Longju going to get their first turret of the game. Yep, and it will be a Rift Herald for the Africa Freaks. Interesting priority they've had on this in the first two games. Yeah, we'll see if they give it. We'll see who they give it to this time. It didn't really do much in the last game, as we said. Yeah, I mean, I can't really recall a time where Ixu got, you know, really low, and you're like, well, there's that five percent damage reduction. <laughs> wow, and Mickey dropping the ult onto Coco, but it's not. Uh, Going to give him a kill. Lyra coming in a little bit later now. Maybe it was all clever bait. 
luring him into a false sense of security. I guess so. He's like, well, the alt is down. I'm fine. You're never fine if Lee sits around. But who's going to get this first dragon? It's Drake now, Doe. We're all European Drake, Drake. now. My bad. All the European players, you finally won. Well, the the there... thing that was never called Dragon, but you called Drake, is now called Drake. Isn't there a physiological difference between Drakes and Dragons? I, I think a, a Drake is a male duck. Well, that too. So maybe these are just really giant ducks. So if you're asking me if there's a physiological difference between made-up things, Doha, my answer yeah. is I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sure somebody's <laughs> decided this somewhere. You're now applying hard science to make-believe creatures, so... Yeah, sure, why not? Well, there are many reasons why not. <laughs> Pick one. I mean, I know the difference between, like, dragons and, like, wyverns, of course. You do? Yeah. What is it? Well, wyverns don't have... Their, their front legs and their wings are one appendage, whereas dragons have separate wings from their four legs. Ah, I see. So there you go. But as far as drakes and dragons, couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Would you rather be a wyvern or a dragon? A dragon, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I want to be able to, like, grab things with my front hands while I fly around and breathe fire on people. I don't know if I breathe fire, though. I mean, fire is so mundane. I want to I breathe something cool. Like, uh... A cold wind? That's pretty cool. Like poison or something. <laughs> you know? That'd be sick. Ice well. breath? Be, yeah. be cool like you wanted? Anything other than flame, really, you know? That was Longju's motto for this season also. Yep. Oh, it's like, uh, this, uh, <laughs> Just let that joke go. Okay. I don't know. I, saw, I, was, I was trying to see who's saying the dragon. Say it again. Say it. Let me react to it this time. Here, one more time. No, it's, it's done now. One Sorry. more time. Okay. I'll go watch the VOD and see what I think. I was I was just thinking of what other whatever what other like elements I could breathe if I was a dragon. <laughs> Infernal. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Does that mean it's the next one? Does it appear that fast? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> what if you breathe rubber? So like you br you breathe rubber on the ground underneath people and they just start bouncing around. <laughs> Is that what you use it for? Yeah. Why don't you just breathe fire and then go into a grove of rubber trees and burn up the trees? <laughs> That's true. That's too much work, man. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Dive coming in from the Afrika Freaks. Expression in a lot of trouble. Chains coming down for Snowflower already. There's the stun. Tries to get back out with the ultimate, but the Q already landed for Lyra, so another easy kill for the Afrika Freaks. Ixu played that really well. He just stood on top of Expression's shadow yep. so that he was going to be immediately CC'd once he triggered his ultimate, and they'd finish that. Pretty good start. As they take this turret. And Fury, they're going to bring the Tidal Wave down too from here, but they're just going to turn it right around. Ixu may have gotten a little bit crazy there. Oh, gets hit with the Cocoon, and there's a kill for Longju. Afrika Freaks overstaying their welcome. And now Sangin is so far trying to get away. That teleport, That's we'll see what it accomplishes. They should have canceled that. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be able to get there. Maybe he will. Flash is used. Afrika flashes in response. And, yep, that TP, debatable. No, not really. He should have used it. <laughs> I think they had, uh, at least he's going to get some farm off of it and push the wave up and maybe get some turret damage down. If they get this turret damage down, it, it will be useful yeah. uh, at the very least. But I stop. Oh. We are going to have to give the wolves over, and long as you taking the opportunity to do some damage to the Tier 2 turret. Got some farm for the TP. All yeah. right. A little bit. Why not? It's something anyway. And so those CS leads that we talked about early, earlier really still only exist in the mid lane. Yep. Well, the lane swap really messed with Longju's head when they decided to reassign their lanes. And the tower push just went a whole lot better for the Afrika Freaks. Yeah. And we are all even up on towers for the moment. Snowflower! Oh, wow. Completely caught out trying to get away with that Madrid E flashes. Just barely escapes. I'm surprised you made danger, it out of that The one. dangers of warding by yourself, especially with a squishy champion like Karma. Yeah. We are going to see the Yomu's first here for Fury, as expected. Should be a Yomu's Black Cleaver build. You can just stack up those Black Cleaver stacks really quickly. Yep, he had that Yomu's in the last fight, too, in the, the post-dive engagement. Nobody really with armor right now, either. 
as Ixu has gone for a quick Spirit Visage in the lane. Yep. So there's not a lot of answers to the Lucian as he continues to get arm penetration, especially since Lyra has gone for Warrior Enchant Boots of Mobility and nice. Type Stone. This That's is you do it. a jungle build that we have not seen in quite a while, though. It is He's aggressive, to be sure, and he is also probably building a Black Claver. He's channeling his inner like ring troll insect. Think of all the hey, aggressive Lee Sins. It's fun to see, it's fun to see high damage Lee Sins. Yeah. No doubt. And it's a treat these days because while it may have happened in the days of yore, it does not happen very much right now. So a bold move to be sure. But so far so good? Yeah. They've gotten a little bit of a lead right here. Is it enough to really stop the late game team fighting prowess that Longju's uh -oh. opposition has? Uh oh, Mickey gets some of that parallel convergence. Q coming back through. Snowbar's right there. They're going to lock up Expression for the moment. Coco's on the scene. Elting Expression saves himself. Close Ooh. call. Well, could have been a finisher right there. And wow, that was a lot of damage. And Mickey intentionally walked into the parallel convergence that didn't flash so that he could bait him into that play. Almost worked. Snowflower was there to provide the heals, and that early game damage spike of Karma and Lee Sin, definitely noticeable. So Expression forced to use his ult, forced to use his flash. And Mickey gets out only with a ghost, which is on that lower cooldown now also. Yep. Uh, Ghost just got such a huge buff. Ixu coming in. They're going to try to catch Coco, but he's already over the wall. Escape. Dragon. Next dragon in one minute, and it is another Infernal Drake again. I love this composition from Africa. It's, it's super aggro. It's super aggro. It would be very difficult to reasonably practice against this because they've gone for Boots of Mobility Lee Sin first. Karma, Sivir, and Ghost Victor. That's a really fast composition, and therefore they can collapse on you to create picks faster than you would normally expect or reasonably expect if you're Longshu. And it's very, very dangerous. Two team-wide speed boosts from the Karma and the Sivir. Yeah. And this Lee Sin could be basically anywhere on the map at any given time. He's even winning the farming war now against Chaser, which is a little odd. Yeah, that is a bit surprising. Well, Chaser wasn't really part of a lot of those early ganks. He at least, you know, used that time to get some farm, but now Lyra's been able to do a little bit more even. It's interesting that we're seeing Sightstone on some of these junglers too. Not so much on the Lee Sin because you're going to get that, especially if you want to change it into a red trinket. But because with Chaser and Elise, you wouldn't expect that Sightstone to be there given the Elise play we've seen recently, but I think this is probably going to be a reaction to the Blue Trinket changes because you just have to have more wards down now to contest objectives. Yeah. All right, Infernal Drake is back up again. Wow, Drake, Coco just killed a baby dragon in front of you and you're not going to do anything about that? Uh, I mean, I don't know, I guess not. Why would he? Oh, you know, saving didn't. your own kind, perhaps? If they get this second buff, that is Pretty big damage boost team wide. Yeah, no and doubt. You do not want that on a very fast pick comp. Africa backs off the Drake for the moment. Trying to defend that mid lane turret, but Longju is going to need to be very, very sure that they do not let Africa have that dragon. Drake, Drake, whatever it is. Draken. Draken. Sounds like a like a video game. Draken. Probably was at one point. I'm half Dragon, half Drake, the artist, <laughs> musical artist. Let's go fight some crime. <laughs> <laughs> Why crime? I don't know. Because nobody likes crime. Longju getting that Drake. Coco kicks back. Wow, I think Lyra does a thought, lot of damage. Yeah, I think he thought he did a little bit more there as he kicked Coco back to it. Can they get the Drake? Lyra blocked from it with that tidal wave. And so they do trade. They're going. Wow. Okay. Oh, oh, Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Lyra, are you crazy? <laughs> oh, boy. Aqua Prison just barely misses. And I think, I think it may be time to disengage. That was a moment of Lee Syndrome right there, <laughs> following so. up on that Q. It's like, yeah. He was so excited that he finally managed to hit Elise with a Q instead of a Spiderling. Yep. He had to go for it. <laughs> Just kind of got to make a play. I mean, on the inside of that, like, uh, headband for Lee Sin, he's not actually blind. He's just got it over his face. It just says, make plays on the inside. <laughs> so he just sees it 24-7. <laughs> That's where Lee Syndrome comes from. <laughs> uh, 
know if you want to tank that one. Did have the Karma Shield up. Yep. Well, Lyra has decided that he's going to take his anger out on the red buff, which is probably a safer thing to do for the moment. Yep, and look at that. It's uh, a beautiful ocean. Yeah, that's right. Ocean Drake coming up next. Oh, Drake for short. Oh, Drake. <laughs> Gonna go slay the O Drake. <laughs> Could also be the start of a Greek tragedy. Oh, Drake. <laughs> oh, Drake. You lived in the pit and did not see the danger that you were forewarned of. <laughs> you wear the Ides of March. Oh, Drake. <laughs> that, that's a, well, you successfully bridged 2,000 we 2, <laughs> years of history right there. We went there. from uh, Greek to Roman. It was great. <laughs> yes, to Roman. Rome. Yeah. Technically, Rome? what are you talking about? Technically, that's from Julius Caesar, the Shakespeare play. Yeah, he was he was a Roman dude. I can't help <laughs> it. Just that, wasn't I can't help it that Shakespeare wrote about him. I mean, Greek and you know Greece you, you and Rome can't, pretty close. You can't help if Shakespeare wrote about him. That yeah. implies that you would if you could. If you had a time machine, Doa, would you go back and prevent Shakespeare from writing Julius Caesar? I'd, I'd go back and I'd be like, Will. <laughs> Will, all right, look, I'm going to be doing this eSports, but don't worry about what eSports is. It's not important. I'm going to make a dumb comment about something you wrote, and that will never happen if you don't write it, so so don't. So what would you have Shakespeare write? Uh-oh. Oh, okay, we're, we're safe now. A tragedy about dragons. <laughs> Like there's these mythical creatures, they're really big, uh, a little bit. Well, in I your think area, he knew, I really. Think, right I, think, now. I think he knew what dragons were. Yeah, going. I was gonna say, <laughs> they're cool, man. In the future, like 500 years from now, people will be really into dragons. So write about them now. You'll be ahead of your time. Dragon Riders by William Shakespeare. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Might be kind of difficult to stage that in, Eliz in Elizabethan <laughs> times. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to bring some special effects guys back <laughs> with us. I guess so. This is all, this is all a very uh, elaborate time traveling setup to prevent me from telling a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it, I think. It's, uh, just alter time and space for that. That's fine. I agree. That's not. It's certainly not a reckless use of no. time travel at all. No, man. I mean, Rick and Morty do that kind of stuff all the time. <laughs> fine. I'm not worried about it. And you shouldn't be either, viewers at home. <laughs> well, the game has reached a bit of a stalemate. For the moment, one dragon apiece, two turrets apiece. Gold fairly even up. Africa looking for picks, but uh, I feel like they've been stalled out a little bit now. Yeah, they're just going to set up on the bottom side of the map as they push forward right now. They're trying to get the, that pressure in all the side lanes so that they can transition into control in the bottom side of the river to take the next Drake when it spawns. Not that Ocean Drake is... Ocean Drake is probably definitely the worst one. Yeah, it's also it like the worst name for a ska punk band ever, too. Ocean Drake? Yeah. I would use it. But I agree. I mean, oh, oh, Snowflower, a lot of trouble, gets picked. Tries to get away. Manny moves fast on that E. Got to go fast. It was a combination of... Oh, that teleport. Yeah, you can't TP in on oh. that. They can get out too. That was a combination of Silver Ult and... Whoa, Mickey goes in with a Flash Chaos Storm. There's a kill from Snowflower. They're going to do a ton of damage with the knockup as well. Chaser trying to flash away. Turret getting very, very low. Kills coming in from the Afrika Freaks and from Longju, and now the Flash of Expression going back in onto Song Yu. Double kill for Fury, looking for the triple now. Gonna almost get it. Expression picks up the third kill for the team anyway. That was a great play by Fury and Expression. When they saw that Mickey didn't have any mana anymore, they knew that they were going to be able to take those kills Guess because so. they weren't gonna be able to provide any burst in response. First off, Coco sails in over the wall right here, and he actually does get the stun onto Ixu even as he's getting pushed out by the Ember's Divide. So they get the first kill, but Mickey's going to be able to respond here and uh, Whoa, deal Mickey. some great damage with that Chaos Storm. So everybody's low, but look, he has no mana, and Song Yun stays one auto attack too long, allows 
Fury and Expression just to get that free kill, basically. I mean, that one auto attack did get them the mid lane turret, but then it lost them uh, three two more people. Yeah, probably not worth it. But Africa maintains a gold lead. Dragon is up. And so, it's Ocean Drake time. Longju, Chaser, fishing for a... Well, they're going to engage this, it looks like. Vicky's wrapping oh, around. There's the speed. That's Holy cow. Wow, uh, Dragon taken by Longju, though. And that speed doesn't get Africa anywhere. It's like, well, well, it got them somewhere, just nice. not where they needed to be. <laughs> it didn't get them anywhere metaphorically. Ah, okay. Well, there's the Ocean Drake. So there you go. Restore some missing mana. And health when you're out of combat. Yep, that's right. With champions or turrets. Right. Oh. Ooh. Ah, the plays. Oh. oh. No. The vision oh. control. They're trying to see if Longju will face check this, but they do have that ward in the river. And they're going to go Is again, though. There's the speed going in. Tidal Wave tries to prevent the engage. Coco backing off. Chaser repels. Ixu trapped with that Aqua Prison. And Africa just can't quite catch Longju again. I mean, the disengage has been good. Well, they didn't have several for that. Mickey yeah. did use his ghost to attempt the engage right there, but engaging onto Chaser, who has that repel, is tricky. Especially with all the disengage that Longju has again. They can zone them out within a zero old. I think the Nami pick was a parallel convergence. Yeah, I agree. I think the Nami pick was good here. Yeah. But it's it, this is a fun battle, just like our first game. These compositions are very opposite of each other. One of them is trying to kite back, disengage, and control objectives. The other one, Africa's, wants to use a bunch of speed buffs to collapse on somebody and pick them off quickly. Yeah, and, uh, you know, unfortunately for Africa, they're not going to get the Drake that gives you a speed buff this game, too. Because we know the three that will appear. Do we? We've seen two Infernals and an Ocean, so we could still see the air. Yeah, but the, the Mountain Drake uh, icon I, was on the pit, so. See it. Spoiler alert. Damage to turrets. That's going to be really good for Longju, actually, yeah. who has a strong siege composition. Yeah, well, Yomu's popped for Fury. He tried to get as much damage onto that turret as he can, and they get it. Three turrets to three now. Longju equalizes. We're just about dead even when it comes to gold, too. And this is where Longju fell apart last uh -oh. game. Oh, Lyra gets caught out completely. Manages to W back onto Snowflower. Fury chasing with the culling. Didn't have flash, but didn't need to use it. His safeguard. And yeah, Africa, they haven't found those early picks. And Longju, this is where they fell apart, I was saying last game though, which is doing what their composition needed them to do, which is bait this Baron. But it looks like they've made some adjustments in this one, and they are starting to sit around the Baron pit and play around the vision here, which is Fantastic for them because they want to be trying to force these five man team fights if they can. Somehow they've gotten pressure onto all three lanes right now. That shouldn't happen if you're Africa. Huh. Being pretty scary in that top jungle, too. Longju has to be really concerned if they start splitting up like this. Oh, Lyra caught again. And nowhere really to go this time. Turns around, kicks uh -oh. Fury. Fury in a little bit of trouble, trying to do the damage, and that Lee Sin just not able to do quite enough. Wow, that was so close. It was. For Fury, though. Red buff doing a little bit of burn work on him, too. Yeah. They get the kill onto Lee Sin, but they need to transition this into something. And you do get like a tick of red buff immediately when you hit somebody too now. Yeah. So that's a little bit more initial burst as well. Well, every time you hit them. So right. you get a burn tick every time you auto them. You, it used to be where it would just be a damage over time that yeah. was uh, reapplied for the duration. But now you re apply that first tick of damage every time you hit them. So it's, a, it's not a lot more damage, but it is some more. Hey, when you get as low as Fury did, that uh, it might yep. make the difference. Absolutely. Another auto or two, and that might have been a kill. Double Rylize here from Longju now, as expected. It does make the speed composition a little bit trickier to run for Africa. So, Phantom Dancer now done too. Big crit build here for Fury, Armor Shred. Crit. Yeah, I mean, letting Fury have that Lucian was. A well, they banned it in game number one. There's yeah. a reason. It's. Really, really strong right now. 
I think if we uh, go to a game three, which it looks like we certainly might, we're probably going to see that Lucian band again. Oh, but first, we'll see a pause. Our first series, Doa, and our first glorious Korean pause. All right, but where's our first bug splat? We haven't had that yet. Oh, uh, that's coming in the next game. All right. We got we to gotta work our way up to bug splat. Awesome. I'm excited. You see the bug splat icon on the drag pit? <laughs> Dragon pit. Coco, having a bit of a uh, better game this time around. They didn't have a bad game. They just played their team composition wrong to the win conditions in the last game. Mm. Well, we'll see what the problem is. Uh, we probably won't. We'll just wait until the uh, problem gets fixed. That's what we do, Doa. We're waiters. We're That's very right. patient. We are. Longju has snappy new uniforms this season. Yeah, that's right. I feel like Afrika uh, has updated uniforms as well. Yeah, they do. They do look good. Everybody looking good in the new OGN studio with I was their gonna new say, uniforms. We have an updated studio, too, and it looks good. Yeah, it does. We're still kind of wearing silly kind of coats, but we look okay. <laughs> we kind of look like insurance salesmen today, though. I don't know how many insurance salesmen wear silver jackets. Well... <laughs> You got me where, there. Where did so. you? Where <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking from more the with the bling, jackets off. From the Bling Insurance Company of Minnesota, <laughs> where you're from? Uh, from Bling, Minnesota, yeah. It, well, right. the Bling Insurance uh, Corporation. Kind of sounds Going like door a town to in door. Minnesota, though. <laughs> Let's see it. They're like, yo, dog, you want some insurance? <laughs> Buy it for me. I have a shiny metallic jacket. That's right. Who can say no to a shiny <laughs> metallic jacket? That's what I wear when I go out to the bars, though. Do you really? Yep. I should know this, <laughs> shouldn't I? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but you, yours kind of... Who can say no? Well, <laughs> me, apparently, <laughs> but like not a lot of other people. <laughs> not a lot of other people. Looks like the problem's with Coco's computer. We're going to blame him anyway. Coco, shame on you. <laughs> what did you do? What did you do to that computer, Coco? Yeah, he's... That's right. Animatedly <laughs> pointing at his screen. Mickey <laughs> It's not seem too excited about this boss. No. I mean, he's had a rough day. You know, I mean, he didn't get to fight in the last team fight of the last game. The victor hasn't been working out. He's been taking some chances and kind of dying. He's died once. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's once. <laughs> style. Pure style for Chaser. Worked better when his ID was real foxy. <laughs> real stylish. I feel like he could have started his own fashion line with the name Real Foxy. Would have worked out so. well for him. Yeah. Better than his league career? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Depends on how good of a designer he is, I man. I suppose. I haven't seen it. I'd watch fashion or Project Runway with League of Legends players. <laughs> I would love to see League of Legends players try and make garments. That would be hilarious. Garments. You'd be like, well, uh, <laughs> How does the sewing machine work? I've got a... <laughs> I made a t-shirt, and <laughs> on the t-shirt, I put one of my favorite characters from League of Legends. <laughs> but it's done in sort of a cute style. They probably didn't drop themselves, though. <laughs> yeah. And for the bottom half of the ensemble, I will wear blue jeans. <laughs> There you go. Nailed it. Hey, and we nailed that pause, too. We're back in the game. <laughs> Longju uh, still deep inside the Africa jungle. And they're going to go for Baron. Yep, this is what they should be doing. All right, does Africa know about this? Well, they can't. They, even if they do, they can't really do anything about this now that Longju is actually committing to this objective. Probably. Tidal Wave used just in case. And that Baron bump, it does last three and a half minutes now. It's a little bit longer than it was before. Gives you more time to work with it. They have an excellent siege composition with the Lucian and the Azir. Plenty of peel there with the Nami. So this should be a pretty smooth road to game closure, barring some sort of disaster for Longju. Yeah. Now they're trying to maybe, no, they can't quite get the collapse on the Ixu down the bot lane, but they can put a lot of pressure on. All three lanes, once again, looking good for Longju. And I feel like this is the kind of more cohesive team that uh, that they were talking about, you know, that uh, the players wanted to sort of create. Well, they had, they played a sort of similar style of composition last game, and they had a breakdown when it came to executing around that Baron. But it looks like in between games they made an adjustment. They realized that the Baron control is what they were lacking. They were more deliberate this game about warding up in the enemy jungle and more decisive about taking 
Yeah, it's a bit tighter this time around. Dragon's up. There's a Mountain Drake. And like we mentioned earlier, this is going to do a lot for Longju's ability to knock down these remaining turrets. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, a little bit of action, but not much. And Longju just taking that Drake easily. And another helpful tooltip to remind all of our viewers about the 6.9 changes. We are on 6.10 now. Yep. And now, I mean, combine that with the Baron buff, this turret's going to fall really fast once they get a minion wave onto it. Yeah, that's, that's a huge bonus for this team. Waiting on waves right now. Chaser will be coming up to join the rest of his team. Yep. And they will get the Azir turret down, so... All right. See how... Wow, that turret is dying very quickly. I actually think that was a bit of a mistake. You think so? Uh, the Azir turret probably should have been placed at the Tier 2 location so they could continue this push. Uh, um, because they didn't have another minion wave lined up to in the top side to take the last Tier 2 turret. I mean, maybe they weren't confident of their ability to take down that turret, which seems kind of silly when you look yeah. at how fast it died. And they could still create that same zone with the Parallel Convergence. Right. So I would have liked to have seen them make a, a stronger inhibitor play right there instead. But they're, they're playing the conservative game. Just remove all the turrets in the inner ring before attempting to break the base itself. Yeah, looks like it's just going to be a very methodical closeout for Longju if they can keep this up. Far so good though, another turret going down. Inspection, dueling with Ixu in the middle lane, or the jungle really. That's another turret for Longju. Yep, and that should be the end of the Baron buff. The, it wasn't a great Baron power play. They got a few thousand gold out of it, but nothing spectacular. Yeah. And it will be the Elder Dragon next in his scary, scary purple face. Wow. That looks really dangerous. Don't do that, Sivir. Well, Sivir, uh, Sivir has one of the least safe weapons to herself. Yeah, really. It's been amazing for years. She hasn't cut her own arm off waving that thing around. Or cut herself in half as it comes yeah. back to her. <laughs> that too. She does have to kind of reach down in the middle of it to grab it when it comes back. So. Yeah, terrifying. I'd rather just be Lucia to deal with some guns. Yeah, no kidding. Looks way easier. <laughs> And see, the thing is, is like, Sivir has to worry so much about cutting herself to ribbons with her own weapon that she can only run around, really. Whereas <laughs> Lucian, like, he can dash and, like, do all these cool things. He's got guns. Doesn't need to worry about hurting himself, you know? Get out of here with your antiquated, dangerous technology, yeah. Sivir. Moving to guns. Guns are the best. This message brought to you by the NRA. That's so strong. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. This message brought to you by Riot Games, excuse me. <laughs> Guns are the best. Well, I mean, Lucian's the strongest AD carry right now, so I guess it's definitive. It is. Yeah. Culling Yu's pushing Africa off of that turret. Baron buff still. Oh, no, just ca it's just right now. Well, this is... Probably just going to be a waiting game until yep. Mr. Elder Dragon decides to show up for his immediate demise. Yep, but that 50% bonus to all of the existing dragon buffs plus the burn damage is going to be pretty good. They will be. He's continuing for now. Wave clear is really good for Africa. Cracking this base is going to be quite challenging for Longju against a Victor and Sivir, two yeah. of the best wave player champions in the entire game. So how do you do it? You know, how do you break it? Do you have to try to pull them out when you're going for an objective? Or? Well, basically, Longju's just going to have to continue to take dragons and barons until they can dive, perhaps, or they can get a convincing enough echo split push going. But it's, it is going to be really hard. They don't have two TP, so they can't 1-3-1. The wave clear is basically instantaneous from Africa. Baron will help that quite a bit. Should. But for now, like you said, it's gonna kind of be a bit of a lull in the action. Baron up in one minute, 
Dragon and only a little over that. And I mean, if you if you don't have any previous dragons, that Elder Dragon buff is, is nice, but just not quite as valuable. Yeah, absolutely not. So value is pretty low there for Africa. Yeah. But I mean, there's there's value in preventing long as you from getting it, you know. That uh, that's some pretty big value. Yeah, you do get some nice burn damage too, like you would have with a fifth dragon buff back before this patch existed. It the spawn from Baron coming oh, up Yobu's soon. Teleport flank coming in, especially looking for a play onto Lyra, I suppose. Now wanted to go after Mickey. They didn't get a lot out of that. No, but they got him in position to do the. Baron, which is right. It's not ideal, but he's there to make a play at the primary objective. Going to be able to clear out some of these wards, maybe. Fury will take some damage. Africa does not want Longju to have this one. No, that would pretty much be the end of the game. Nice is your turret right there. Make sure they know exactly where Africa is. They should just go for the Baron. I don't know why they're sitting up in the mid lane right now. Chaser is clearing out top wave. I don't know, maybe they want to go get the Elder Dragon. I think that they should have done the Baron already before that spawned. And now we're in a situation where it will be both teams going for one objective. Baron more important to Longju's composition because of how good it will be in these sieges. Yeah, Africa though, they're gonna trade that Baron for the Elder Dragon. And so they will get a little bit of that burn. And I suppose they will get the buff from their first dragon anyway. And this is the right call. Longju just going up the mid event immediately because it will take eight seconds for them to recall back. So they're going to lose some damage on the turret right here. All of it. In wow. Fact. Yeah, they are killing objectives so fast right now. Look at that. Longju should be able to commit. They do have the banner of command onto the cannon minion. They're trying to body block for that. Just slowly whittle it down. That's right. Africa looking for an angle to go in on this. And I feel like the window is closed. Oh, man. Look how low that inhibitor is. Yeah. They can breathe on it and it'll fall over. It's one shot, really. Oh, uh -oh. oh, going in. Yep, Ixu trying to make a play on the Fury. Ixu taking a lot of damage in return as Expression comes in from behind. Chaser a little bit caught out. They were at Mickey chasing him down. Maybe they can get a kill. Going in, goes for the insect on the Chaser, repels out of it. Tidal Wave comes through, only hits Lyra. Ixu still manages to pick up the kill on that Elise. And so Longju pushed away. Wow, that is a heartbreaker for Longju, not getting that last hit onto the inhibitor right there. The speed, they split up. And if you're Longju, you cannot split up against this Africa composition. They're too damn fast, and they will get to you. And now we're in this situation where Africa may be able to bounce back in this game, depending on how many turrets they can get, and if they can actually get an inhibitor right here, which would be very difficult into the Baron buff. Yeah. Yeah, Africa. Their gets siege a is also super bad. Low range on the Sivir, and you don't want to be walking up to turrets as a victor either to try and auto attack them. Africa, though, has managed to give themselves a new lease on life for the moment, anyway. But for how long? Lyra now has that Randuin's, he has the lock of the Iron Solari as well, so going for a little bit of tanky stats. Indeed. So we see another Baron Empowered push coming in. Can they actually finish off the inhibitor this time? Probably can. It's getting a lot of health back. Calling use, and there goes the inhibitor. Longju does get it. Africa not quite close enough to respond. So he got the kill, but the scaling is fine generally for Africa, but Karma and Lee Sin are not going to be powerhouses in the late game because they're so, they're so reliant on getting a flank or getting a pick onto somebody. They just don't have the tools to fight. Oh, nice. It's a little sapling right there. Yeah, they don't have the tools to really win a 5v5 team fight against all the kiting power of Longju. I mean, all they can do is 
kind of hope for another opportunity like the one they had before, and that might be it. Pure flashes back over the wall, gonna get taken out anyway. Africa Freaks finds a pick. And that's what they've been good at, yep. is they find these targets who are low. Mickey's still going, he has no mana though. A lot of damage on the Fury, but like you said, that Victor can't cast a lot of spells from here on out. Africa looking for this tier two now. Mercy Coco making his move into bottom lane, but his turret's already low. Yeah, that's right. Looks like they'll be able to get it. Iksu body blocking the culling, and so Africa Freaks does manage to take a turret of their own in the bot lane. Yeah, gold lead remains very thin at this point Surprising. in the game at 40 minutes. It's been a bounce back here from Africa, taking some kills, taking a couple more turrets. And even though they lost that inhibitor, they've been able to push up the mid lane enough that it hasn't been threatening their nexus just yet. Yeah. And one thing to think about too is just how fast Mickey's gonna be moving with that ghost now as well. Oh yes. It's gonna be very quick. Yeah, he's closing in one level away from the full 45%. Yeah. Couple that with some upgraded silver ults too. And it's going to be a lot of movement speed on a pretty low cooldown, all things considered. Well, Africa doing everything they can at the moment just to keep these lanes pushed back. And saying it looks Song Yun actually has more money right now. Thanks to his 100 CS advantage over yes. Fury. It's not bad. This game, I gotta say, I kind of thought at one point Longju was gonna be able to close it out pretty cleanly, but the yeah, Africa Freaks have been crafty enough. They, they found yeah. those skirmishes. Well, it's it's easy to find skirmishes too when you have this many speed boosters, right? And True. that was one of the questions I had: is is Longju even remotely used to playing against this kind of composition? Because this is really weird. Yeah. And where normally it might be okay to split up in some of those situations and you would be able to escape. You just can't do that. You have to stay as a very tightly knit unit in Wu Longju right now. Because any deviation, even a small one like we saw from Pure into his own jungle, uh, proved fatal. Condition-wise, Longju is still doing just fine. They've got vision on their side of the map anyway, and a little bit over on the Africa side. Trying to get more now. go another deep warding mission. They're not going to catch anybody else out. Africa has no reason to be outside of the base right now. Yep. When the Baron isn't going to be spawning for another minute. So as long as you're going in on this inhibitor turret, looking to get their second inhibitor of the game. And Snowflower comes at Mantrid Shield. They're not doing a good job, Longju, of defending their bannered cannon minion right there. They basically just let Song Yun walk up and kill it for free. He's taking a little bit of culling damage, which he will be able to heal up thanks to the Bloodthirster that he bought as his most recent item. Well, wards being cleared by both sides there. And can the African Freaks hold on? The later this game goes, I feel like it's not really going to get much better for them. Nope, sure isn't. And Longju again in the driver's seat, setting the pace of this game and they will be able to fall back in seven seconds to this Baron. They have a huge minion wave developed in mid. And just take the Baron and start sieging up a different inhibitor, should they so choose. Yeah. All right, Baron's up. It's time. And Africa immediately moving towards that. They really want to stop them, but Ixu maybe walk into a trap. No. Nope. Going to check the bush with that sapling again. So plays the same. Little trick had used on the side of Africa and then immediately cleared inside the dragon. So they know that they're not going to have any vision right now. Both blue trinkets down. Special is now making a split push attempt. Interesting. The inhibitor is back up in the mid lane, though. Oh, Longju, you have to be super careful about yeah. that. They know where Expression is. I mean, we know Africa can probably still win a team fight at this point in the game. Uh, if they get the pick. I'm not sure they could win a straight up 5v5 that easily without Lyra making some sort of spectacular mechanical play. Which not Possibly. out of the realm of possibility. Well, that 
soldier went a long way. He's been on many travels. Oh, yeah. Yobu's pop, they may have caught Lyra here. Lyra getting back over the wall. Now they're so going fast. in. That's right, Ixu teleporting down, and can they catch people here? This is a big chance, especially flashes into the wall. They may have him. Chaser's there right there as well. Tidal wave goes through, slows down Africa for just a moment. But they've got a good angle on this, doing some decent damage to Longju, and they may be turning right around for this Baron. Yeah, even though they caught Expression right there, they couldn't actually get either of their damage dealers onto the other side of the wall to capitalize on that catch. So it doesn't mean a whole lot, and Africa now just going to go straight up for this Baron. This is a little risky. Well, I mean, you've got to do something, right? Expression trying to come over the wall here. The rest of Longju there, Africa in a lot of trouble as Ixu goes in onto Coco now. Expression coming from behind. Mickey needs to be careful, gets jumped on, though, by that Echo. Expression has to back away after getting ignited. Snowfar getting some good damage in. Chaser on his own. The Emperor's Divide thrown in. There's a kill for Songyun. It might go good for Africa. Chaser so low as Lyra tries to follow him. Snowfar comes in. Being a bloodthirsty sport, nearly being a dead one. Nice two-man Aqua Prison, but that's another kill for Lyra. Expression re-engages. Going to try to make some plays. Gets out the anti-play, and the Africa Freaks have won the fight. Yeah, they may just go ahead and take this game, too. They have some minions to work with in the mid lane. It's a long death timer. And that's not how you want to fight that fight. If you are Longju, you want to kite. You don't want to split up your team onto opposite flanks like that because it made Coco and Fury so much more vulnerable without that tank line there in the front to support them. And they actually do it. They are tearing through these turrets, doing a lot of damage. Lyra low health, though. I don't know, 20 seconds left on Coco. I don't think they can quite finish it. They're going to try, though. I think you gotta go for this it. This is their only opportunity. They do have to go for it. Tidal Wave use a lot of good knockups coming in, especially making plays. There goes one kill on the pier. Now it's a 1v5. The turret's going down. Three seconds, two seconds. So Coco comes up. They can't finish it. Africa Freaks just can't quite get it done. And I don't know how you finish the game now. Coco gets the kill on the Mickey as well. Ixu staying around to fight to help his team escape. But. Man, it was close, but I don't know. I think I think Longju may be able to come back and win this one. Well, they can reverse push right they now. Can. They're only missing their support. Three members dead on Africa. It's up yeah. to Lyra and Songyun to be the base defenders right now to hold this final push. I mean, Songyun does a lot of damage, but this was just a, such a clutch tidal wave from here. Yeah, well, he does get stunned. It bought a lot of time, though. And Vicky right here. Uh, let's take a look at how Snowflower actually died. So he actually just comes in with a proc there from the Iceborne Gauntlet. Slows down Mickey enough to help solidify that kill. Yeah, and now long as she's trying to end the game right here, they just walk up, take the inhibitor easily. This is going to be hard too, though. 15 seconds on Mickey, so I don't think they can end. No, it took them a little bit too long to walk across the map, I suppose. They just settled for the bottom inhibitor. Not a bad prize either. Can Africa chase these guys down, though? Not with the culling coming back the other way. All right, Elder Dragon is up. At least for now. Whoa, big wave in the bottom. Wow, lane. absolutely enormous. So somebody has to go deal with that, or they're just going to straight up lose an inhibitor. Africa face tanks the turret, and they're going to make a run here. Elder Dragon is really big for Longju. I think Africa might be underestimated. Are they going to try and backdoor this? Where are they going? Because they're going to go over to Baron they're and getting that instead. I don't think they can get Baron done, though. Well, there's a ward oh. on it. They're going to try and butt brush bait this, but well. they know they're not doing it, so. Why would they walk in uh, there? Uh -oh. Just gonna walk into Recall the base. Recall time. It's time to get out of there. Recall's not started yet. No, I mean, now they know it's up. Double back okay. door. Do it. Yeah, right. Do it, you pansies. Uh, Just both teams run for the nexus. Well, Africa would have a little bit less to go through if they tried it. Longju moving in. They've got that banner cannon minion. But Africa, if Africa can win a team fight here, but against that dragon buff, I don't think you can. Here we go. The last defense. Africa Freaks trying to keep their base alive. Longju seeming very hesitant to commit to this. I don't know when a better time would be, though. When they have Baron Bum? I guess, but I mean, you've got super minion waves pushing in two lanes. You've got the Elder Dragon, and you've got three dragons besides that. It's an intense shield there from Sung Yoon. Yeah. And from Snowflower. Lots of shields. Oh, yeah. Double lock it. Plus Karma Shield. Man. Karma has a death cap. That's why it's so big now. I was like, why is that shield so big? Well, I, I have my answer, Doa. Yeah. 
Oh, you need a death cap. Tidal wave coming through. Ixu kind of on his own. Flashes back out of the fight. As long as you chasing, they want to get the win. Ixu still low. Nice Hawk of Prison. Ooh, gets spell shielded by Songyun. Snowfar turned around. It's a kill for the Afrika Freaks. They may be able to do it again. Coco trying to run out of this. If you're oh long to, remember, you don't have real engage. You have the tidal wave, but that's about it. You want to go to Baron, force them to fight you, and kite. Longju should not be playing this composition in this manner because when they try too hard to engage, it looks like that. Ixu's got TP as well. He can come down whenever he wants, just clearing some super minions in the base for the moment. Looks like it's going to be Baron for the Afrika Breaks now. Oh, this has been a very weird game, Noah. No kidding. I mean, when it comes down to it, the Afrika Freaks have just been much better at team fighting than Longju. Yeah, they have been, but they've also been playing better to how their team can actually win this game, which is finding people who are alone and picking them off, which has been Chaser a couple of times now. Yeah. Meanwhile, Longju, again, they struggled last game with actually knowing to take that Baron, and this time they seem lost as to whether they, where they should be on the map, whether they should be engaging or trying to kite. Because right here, I, all right, you, you see that cocoon on the song unit, you want to hit go, right? But remember, he has a Karma there, and he still has his own ult that he pops, so he's going to be able to get out of that kite, plus all of the lifesteal that he has on his items. So he also saved his spell shield so that he could use it later on that fight onto the Nami bubble. You, th you do see that, though. You're like, okay, Sivir didn't use the spell shield on the cocoon. We can get a chain CC off right here. But you have to respect that how fast that Africa can disengage yeah. with the mantra shielded with the Sivir ultimate. I mean, they're so quick. And they've got all these shields, too. So the squishiness of Africa is very it's very deceptive because they're actually not that squishy. Yeah, especially double lock it and the karma shield. Plus, you're just not going to get that many abilities off that actually land because they will just be out of range. Right. Now they've got the Baron buff. Still don't have really great Siege, of course. No, terrible. Terrible. Like, they've got great wave clear, but they have nobody who can walk up to attack the turret. Right. So oh. they're going to do this instead. Oh, they're going to get that turret. Walking up to it pretty easily. And can they get the inhibitor? I don't know. It would be a fight. Expression gets a stun on to Ixu. There goes the inhibitor. Now Africa just backing away. They're satisfied with that. Poised play from the Afrika Freaks at the end there. Actually, Chaos Storm does go down. They're going to make a push, just shoving people off of this Azir turret. Africa Freaks going for their second inhibitor. They're going to have two in their favor now. Yeah, two to two. But somebody has to go stop that bottom wave, which has been the one developing without anybody there to clear the wave. Yep, got to protect those Nexus turrets. And they may lose the Nexus turret here. So the problem with the Elder Dragon, Noah, is that since it only spawns once every 10 minutes, it does, when we get into this point in the game, make it very difficult to close. Because usually you'd have to make some sort of desperate play yeah. to prevent somebody from stacking to five dragons by 55 minutes into this game. And that would happen every six minutes. Now this only happens once every 10 minutes. It's true. Which means that there's simply fewer objectives in the late game to fight around on a permanent basis. And it means that the pressure on the losing team is lessened a little bit too. Yeah. They don't have to desperately try and fight for dragon number five. Yeah. That is just around the Baron. So as improbable as it seemed, when the Afrika Freaks were like 6,000 gold down earlier, now they've jumped out to a 5,000 gold lead. And uh, Longju's shot calling has just not been there. Yeah. This is a, a good composition that they're running, but they've continuously made mistakes with it, not played around the right objectives, and sort of found themselves in this situation. But credit to Africa, because they never stopped playing their pick on. Oh, they're going to use the uh, Karma E to go in, try to take out this last inhibitor turret. They'll get it. Great use of the Baron buff. Really excellent. It's down now, but yeah. they squeezed every last drop out of that Baron buff. They really did. I mean, they got two inhibitors. Inhibitor turret up in top lane. And I mean, they're just, you know, one pick away from winning this game. And at this point, Long as you just look scared too, you know? They look like they don't even want to try to fight Africa. And, you know, why would they? They've lost the last two or three team fights in a row now. Think about going in now. Expansion 
Song Yoon spell shields that Ixu turns around onto Chaser Sivaral use another tidal wave comes through expression backing away pure has to flash out of it and an inhibitor taken down that's all three now there goes the last nexus turn just from the super mage alone expression caught on his own chaos storm zoning very well expression manages to get out with his ultimate still dies in the end guardian angel gonna bring it back in just a moment but there goes the nexus and the Afrika freaks get the 2-0 I really thought we were going to see three games in this series. I but. really did too, Doa, but Long wow. Chu was not insistent enough in their objective control at the end. And Africa Freaks, they kept playing for those picks. They yeah. kept trying to find somebody and take him out at the end. Well done by them to well. take the 2-0 here. And you know what's interesting? They did it with this super speed composition that was very uh, different to what we've seen before. They did it with a 1-3-1 sort of split push composition. I love it. In game number one, so they're introducing some new strategies in the new meta. I love it. It's entertaining, it's uh, effective, and it's a type of thing that you'd expect to see from the Afrika Freaks, and they played it well. They did indeed. Well, congratulations to them taking the first series of the season, Long Zhu saying that they have those communication issues. Well, they still seem to have a poor concept of how to play the mid and late game. Yeah. What a statement, though, for the Afrika Freaks to come in here and 2-0 uh, Longju gaming. And you know, Longju, I think, uh, had a lot of confidence coming into this series. Despite uh, going against Africa, they said, you know, our shot calling is, uh, or not our shot calling necessarily, but our communication is better. We feel like a more cohesive unit. and, and uh, you know, while I feel like we saw a little bit of that today, I, it's just clearly not there yet, at least not in this first series. I agree. Well, we'll see how it goes the rest of the season. They certainly have the individual talent well, to make it work. Know? And look at that, Song Yoon again, yeah. just ripping through the enemy team, doing a lot, a lot of damage. Victor and his ear not doing so much in this game, especially compared to the top laners who are just beating on each other. I guess so. Very true. Good amount of damage from, uh, from the Karma, though. Snowflower. Getting pretty bloodthirsty. He had the he had the death cap, and he had another needlessly large on top of it. I like it. That is how you build support. Uh, Fifty minutes. You have the luxury of getting those items, Doa. That's right. And so, makes you wonder where uh, Africa will be able to take themselves this season. And Lyra busting out the lease in the Moby Boots first lease in. That is. Not, not something I would have expected to see today, Doa. Not Medium. at all. But it was fun to watch. He did sell his Moby Boots in the end for Merc Treads, which was a much better decision for the late game. And he continued to make plays and get the necessary kicks and help his team out secure those kills that allowed them to slowly work their way back into a lead in game number two. Yeah, that's right. So what does, uh, what does Long Zhu need to do? I mean, clearly the shot calling needs to be better, but... Yeah, what else? I, just the concepts surrounding, they just seem like they don't know how to use their team compositions properly. And when they played two similar team compositions two games in a row, you could see the improvement from game one to game two, but they still weren't able to close. So yeah. a lot of work to be done there, no doubt. Yep, that's right. And so that brings us to the end of our uh, first series. We are going to have an interview with the players here. That's right. In the studio and just uh, a little bit. Find out who the MVP is for game number two. Doing pretty cool. And now we find out it is Lyra. All right. Played the Bloodthirsty Lee Sin. I'll give him the Bloodthirsty title. He's not a support, but I think he deserves it this time. Well, absolutely. Building Hex Drinker and Warrior Enchant. Yeah. Moby Boots, Sightstone Lee Sin. Pretty damn bloodthirsty as far as. Uh, early game builds go in the jungle right now, looking to make those plays. And he put a lot of pressure down onto the map early, so we will be he hearing from Song Yoon and Lyra. Yep. That's right. And let's just check out some highlights. Uh, let's watch Lyra. Lyra is oh so good. He w to play. Mickey, then he ran around a circle. Well, that was a nice cue. Yeah. Oh, sexy. Great insect right there. Yep. Helping to kill Coco in that last fight. But splitting up like this is exactly what Africa wants because they're going to be able to move faster. If you try and flank them, they will collapse on one of your flanks with a Sivir ult and with the Karma move speed. You can't yeah. flank them. This is not a team composition that is flankable. They're like a pack of lions, man. They just want to separate the weak ones from the herd and run them down. And that's what they did. Vicky there with a the follow-up kill. Yeah. Of the Vixio onto Pure. Pure slightly out of position. Here's that big fight in the mid lane where they thought they had caught out Song Yoon. Snowflower. 
coming back into this one. We're, where's Lyra? What's he going to do here? All right, we're watching kind of him W in and then use his Tempest to cripple. Yep. Oh. Final fight. Let's check out Lyra again. Nice. All right. Nice on new Pin, expression. Pinballing around, making sure expression. Not going to have too many options to escape that, but does with the help of this flash and the uh, chrono break. Just, it was just a lot of uh, disruption, too, you know? Yeah. It looks like it's he time. He did lease in things. Looks like it's time for our MVP interview, and we've got a new translator today. Oh, boy. That's right. My name's Kevin, and he will translate the heck out of his interview for us. So take it away. Thank you very much, guys. This